Hi everyone, in this special edition of Versus, I'm going to be pitting each of the ships in the 300 series up against one another, and what could best be referred to as an all-out battle royale. Which means that I'm going to be going over each of these ships in turn, and talking about what their individual strengths and abilities are, as well as going over which one of these ships would be most appealing to someone, and for what reasons. I'll also talk about some of the potential career paths that each ship would be good at, based on their skills and in the unique features that each ship provides. As part of the new customization feature, ships from this point forward are going to start being offered with a variety of default weapons and component options. So I'm going to stick to talking about components and hardpoint sizes, rather than specific items that these ships come with. All the ships in the 300 series have the exact same number of components, that are all the same size. So there's no point in comparing them between the ships. In the 300i, the 315p, and the 325a all have the same interior cabin space. That can be outfitted with the same facilities, amenities, and vanity items. So I'm going to go over this in detail for the 300i, and then only briefly mention again when I'm talking about the other ships. The 300 series is produced by Origin Jumpworks, which is a company that's built a reputation for manufacturing an array of high-end spacecraft that are exclusively made for a customer base that consists of the rich and powerful. Origin ships are considered to be the preferred choice of society's elite cast, and as the company is quick to point out, selecting an Origin doesn't just mean buying a ship, it means choosing a lifestyle. Their lineup mainly consists of high-end luxury touring vessels that comes in a range of sizes, including the 100i, the 300i, the 600, and the massive 890 Jump. But their lineup also extends to include open canopy vehicles like the X1, and ships from the 300 series, which are designed to do everything from race to explore, and even interdict other ships. The 300 lineup is considered to be the closest thing that Origin has to being a mass-produced product, and they are the workhorse of the company's lineup. Origin currently manufactures four standard models in the 300 series, and offers a variety of customization options for pilots who are looking to personalize their ship or hand tailor it to better fit their individual preference. The first ship in this list that I'm going to be going over is the 300i. It's the base model for the 300 series, it's the least expensive ship out of their lineup, and is designed to be a luxury touring vessel. For weapons it comes with three size 3 hardpoints located on the nose and under each wing, and it comes stocked with two size 2 missiles. For features the 300i comes with a standard bathroom, a mini fridge, a bed that can be used to log out and spawn back into the game from has a monitor mounted at the foot of the bed, a weapons rack, and a locker. Its optional features includes a food maker and a coffee machine, both of which are going to be used to satisfy some of the survival mechanics that are going to be added into the game as part of the 3.8 update. It also comes with a number of optional vanity items, including a sound system, a picture frame, and a holographic digital clock. The interior of the ship consists of a single open space that allows easy access to all of its facilities and to all the points of interest that are located within the ship, which includes the exit and the flight deck. The 300i can carry 8 SCUs worth of cargo, which is the second largest amount of carrying capacity within the series. Like with the rest of the 300 ships, it stores its cargo internally within a space that's located in the belly of the ship, which is going to be the safest way to transport goods. However, there is no direct access to the cargo grid from within the ship, and in order to get at it, you're going to have to lower the ramp that the cargo grid is located on, and then you're going to have to access it from outside of the vessel. The cargo area is extremely efficient in its management of space, so much that its ceiling is very shallow and cannot be used to store even the smallest vehicle, like for instance a grey cat buggy, or anything else that sits higher than a standard size single SCU container. 
When you compare this ship to the other 300s, it still measures up in all the right ways. Its performance may be lower than the other models, but it isn't on a level that's very noticeable, especially when it's being measured up against the 315P or the 325A. It has more weapons hardpoints than the 315P, and the same size and number of weapon hardpoints as the 350R. It can also carry double the amount of cargo than the 325A and the 350R. The swank factor, open interior, and panoramic ceiling view makes it the perfect choice for a personal transport. It's also a great light cargo hauler. It can be used for doing any of the missions that are listed in the contract manager, and it also has all the amenities and faculties that comes along with being a luxury touring vessel, and yet somehow ends up costing the same as a cyclone. Next is the 315P, which is the Explorer variant in the 300 family, which means that it's going to feature better scanning and radar equipment, and has a larger capacity fuel tank. The exterior chassis of the ship would be an exact match for the 300i and the 325A if it weren't for the unique default color scheme that it comes with. Its interior is exactly the same as those two ships, down to the last detail, which includes the same look, vanity items, features, facilities, and customization options. The 315P replaces the nose weapon mount with a utility mount that houses a tractor beam. It should be noted that a utility mount can only be used to attach other utility items onto it, and cannot be used for mounting a weapon. The tractor beam mechanic hasn't been fully worked out yet, but if you've seen any episode of Star Trek, you could easily imagine what some of the possibilities could be for it. For defense, it has two size 3 weapons hardpoints that are located on the wings, and it's armed with two size 2 missiles. It does perform at a slightly higher level than the 300i in nearly every category, but the differences are just an incremental step up. They're not highly significant in any one particular way. But of course, as everybody knows, every little bit counts. Aside from its number of weapon hardpoints, the real thing that differentiates this ship is the cargo space. It has the largest amount of hauling capacity among any of its other sister ships, and has a rather decent hauling capacity for a vessel of its size. The belly ramp is also a unique mix of the 300i's and the 325a's combined. It utilizes two ramps that can be opened up individually or both together. That when added up comes to a combined total of 12 SCU's worth of space. Despite this increase in size, the shallow height of the cargo bay still prevents it from being used as a vehicle transport. When I look at this ship and compare it to the others, I instantly see having a longer range, better scanners, better radar system, much more cargo space, and an ability that none of the other ships in the series can provide, which is of course the tractor beam. The only downside I can see to this vessel is the loss of the weapon hardpoints on the nose, which ends up cutting its total DPS down by a third of what the other ships have. But this shouldn't be that big of an issue if you're planning on traveling with another vessel that's more adept at combat, or just plan on avoiding trouble in the first place. The 315P represents a good play-at-your-own-pace ship that's less orientated towards combat and is more about utility, exploration, and cargo hauling. The increased amount of space means that you could salvage more items from wrecks or carry some spare components with you. It also means that you could stow more gear, which includes weapons, ammo, armor, and any other item that's small enough to be boxed up and placed on the cargo grid. Each ship has three layers of protection the shield, its armor, and the strength of its hull. Although I don't have any current information to back this up, the previously stated hull strengths of the Explorer class ships were always significantly higher than that of the other ships that came from the same lineup of vessels. But this information dates back to the 2.6 build, and may not still be valid today. The 325A has been described as a luxury class dogfighter, which almost seems to be a contradiction in terms, like the gentleman's killing machine. It has heavier armor and is more focused on combat. 
It also has the second highest level of maneuvering and speed amongst any of the other ships. That's only outperformed by the 350R, which is the variant that's specifically designed for racing. The interior of the ship is, once again, an exact match for the 300i and the 315p, having all the same vanity items, features, facilities, and look of the other two ships. Its weapon capabilities includes an impressive size 4 weapon hardpoint on the nose, and two size 3 weapon hardpoints that are located under the wings. It also carries four size 3 and four size 2 missiles. All of these weapons options combined makes it the most combat capable of all the 300s. It also seems to have retained the best features of the 300i and the 315p, while being able to outperform and outgun them, with the only cost for this being a reduction in its cargo hauling capacity. It can carry four SCUs worth of cargo, within the same kind of belly lift that's become standard to the 300 series. This may not seem like a lot of cargo space, but it provides the pilot with more options than if they didn't have any space at all. It allows the player to use this ship for a greater range of missions, it can carry spare components, stow extra gear or pillaged items, and it can be used to safely lock down pretty much anything that fits on its cargo grid. In comparison to other combat ships that also have some internal storage, like the F-7C that only has two SEUs worth of cargo, or the TANA which only has one, the 325A's 4 SEUs of space starts to look even better. When I compare this ship to the others, I see something that's a lot more capable of Mad Maxing your way through the void with. I find the fact that it has better armor than the rest of the series, yet can also still outperform two out of the three other ships to be very interesting. It has the best weapons capabilities out of all of them, and still has all of the interior features of the 300i and the 315p. This vessel is going to be the best at doing any kind of combat mission, including escort, patrol, and bounty hunting, and it's going to have the highest level of survivability when it comes to ship to ship combat. Thicker armor and stronger weapons means that you're going to be coming out of most altercations with a lot less scrapes and bruises than if you were flying any of the other ships in the 300 series. When I specifically compare the 325A to the 350R, it may not be able to perform on the same level in terms of maneuverability and raw speed but it can still outgun it, has better armor, and has access to more onboard facilities, including a weapons rack and locker, which means that your survivability factor is going to greatly improve in all aspects when flying this ship, including when doing FPS missions. The 350R is not produced in large quantities, but it's still arguably the most widely known ship within the 300 series. This dedicated speedster is used by professional racing teams around the galaxy. It's already racked up an impressive number of Carrington Derby wins, and because of that it's going to be a common sight on any racetrack. Being specifically made for racing, it has the fastest cruise speed and the best overall performance within the 300 lineup. But just as you'd expect, this increase in ability comes at a price. It doesn't have the same internal layout as the rest of the 300 vessels. It doesn't have the food prep area or the weapons rack, locker or shelf space. And the recessed niche that held the sleeping area has been replaced with a large bed that sits in the middle of the back of the cabin. One of the biggest surprises is that this ship has a cargo bay with room enough to carry four SEUs worth of cargo. The 350R has three size 3 weapon hardpoints and two size 2 missiles. It's not only the fastest origin produced ship, it's also the fastest ship in the game. It's the largest in size amongst any of the other racers, and it has the best weapons loadout for a racing ship. It's also the only racer that has some internal cabin space, a bed, and the ability to carry cargo internally. This opens up a world of possibilities for this ship including being a decent blockade runner, a light cargo hauler, a scavenger, or an incredibly fast delivery ship. It also invokes dreams of cannonball running my way across the verse, transporting contraband, and telling Smokey to kiss my ass. When comparing the 350R to the first two ships on the list, it has a comparable weapons and missile loadout to the 300I, and a better weapons loadout than the 315P but both of those ships can carry a superior amount of cargo. 
When it comes to matching this ship against the 325A, the 350R may carry a significantly lower amount of missiles, but the difference in their weapons capabilities aren't too far off from one another. They both have the same number of weapons hardpoints, but the 350R has a nose hardpoint that's one size smaller than the 325A's, and they both can carry the same amount of cargo. The only real downside to this ship is that you're going to have to pay a lot more in terms of dollars and cents for the significant increase in ability that this ship has to offer over the others, while having to suffer losing a lot of the survivability factors that are inherently built into the rest of the other 300s. So to summarize, the 300i has a lot going for it. It has more than a decent weapons loadout, especially for being a small non-combat orientated ship. It carries a lot of cargo for its size, and has all the basic amenities that the 300 series has to offer. This would end up being a good ship for anybody that likes the upscale style and look of the 300 series, and would enjoy the conveniences and freedoms that its various facilities provides, but also wants to get it at a reasonable price. Currently the 300i costs $55. Considering that this is the same price as a Cyclone, which is an open canopy vehicle, I'd say that you end up getting a lot for what you're paying for. The 315p is a good craft for players who are less concerned with combat and are more interested in the ship's range and versatility. The forward mounted tractor beam is going to add an extra layer of utility to this ship which could be useful in providing aid for a wide range of operations, including salvage, repair, rescue operations, and even mining. Its longer range is going to make it a better cargo freighter, explorer, and personal transport. If you are going to explore, you might as well do it in style, and have a great view of the universe to enjoy it from. The 315P costs $65, which is only $10 more than the 300i. So it's going to be up to you to decide if the extra utility, increased range, better scanner, better radar, and superior cargo storage is going to be worth the small price bump. And if you consider losing the nose-mounted weapon in favor of a utility mount, to be something that's going to complement your playstyle. The 325A is specifically labeled as being an interdiction craft, and is the most combat orientated out of all the 300 series. Despite being built for battle, it still manages to retain the same style and swank factor that its other sister ships have, as well as having all of the same onboard facilities and amenities, yet it has better armor and can outperform every one of them with the only exception being the 350R. In addition, it has the ability to carry 4 SEUs worth of cargo, which is good enough to carry mission boxes, bring back choice components from destroyed craft, or to be used for stowing some extra gear in a storage box. It can be used as a combat ship to fight or interdict other craft with, as a better defended personal transport, as a blockade runner that smuggles small amounts of highly profitable goods, or as a delivery ship that will absolutely get its package to its destination no matter how many other vessels it has to blow up in order to get there. Defense doesn't come cheap, but surprisingly enough this time the combat variant isn't the most expensive ship in the series but it's still going to cost you $70 in order to fly this vessel off of the showroom floor. Each of the 300 ships gets incrementally better in its performance as you go up the ladder from the 300i to the 315p and eventually the 325a. At the top of the hill stands the 350r. This ship not only performs the best, but it retains a surprising number of facilities, including the bathroom, bed, 3 size 3 weapons hardpoints, 2 size 2 missiles, an internal storage space for 4 SEUs worth of cargo. That's a lot of versatility to have for a racing ship, which opens up a number of other possibilities for it that goes well beyond just using it for racing. And of course, if you want to be boring about it, you can also use it to race other ships. This increase in performance does come at a cost, and that's $125 US. Well, that's going to be it for this overview of the 300 series, I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, because if it wasn't for their generous help, I wouldn't be able to keep doing this. I'm your host, Law of the West. Thanks for watching, and take care.